Good by Jimmy McGill, hello Saul Goodman, or should it be Gene Takavik? The premiere of the fifth season of Better Call Saul was a tense and captivating hour of changing identities, boiling grudges, and loose-fitting ties. There has been much talk in this season's preparation about the exciting ways in which the show's disparate stories will begin to cross. While there is not much indication of that so far, Magic Man does a solid job of restoring bets, while outlining the likely areas of conflict for next season. Let's go now to the important points of the episode. Magic Man began very tense, with a segment of approximately 15 minutes in which Jimmy, who now lives as the manager of the Cinnamon Bakery Jean Takavik, begins to worry that his deception has been discovered. We see him prepare to flee, collecting a stash of diamonds, replacing the license plate on his car and listening obsessively to the police. Finally, Jimmy decides that it is safe to return. Everything is fine, until the taxi driver, who appeared last season returns, and recognizes Jean as nothing less than Saul Goodman, the great lawyer of Albuquerque. In a stressful scene, he forces Jimmy to reluctantly affirm his old identity, while two policemen stalk the eye. It seems that it was not a montage, although Jimmy will not take any risk, he is directly on the phone with Ed, organizing a doubly expensive new identity. At the last minute, however, he changes his mind and says, I'll fix it myself. Now, as far as we know, Jimmy is not a murderer, but how else can he be sure that the taxi driver will not speak? Source, AMC slash Netflix Jimmy's relationship with Kim Wexler, Reese Horn, has been the heart of Better Call Saul from the beginning, but it's starting to seem like it's not much for this world. Kim is the moral center of the series, a conscientious lawyer who lives with a firm but flexible moral code. His ideals disagree with Jimmy's natives, and he doesn't seem to notice. While Jimmy talks about his plans to create new businesses like Saul, Kim's discomfort is written on his face. When she begins to object, he agrees that plans to offer reduced rates for repeat offenders, completely oblivious to the broader moral implications. This tension is revealed later in the episode when Kim is struggling for a not very smart customer to accept a guilty deal that would be silly to refuse. Jimmy offers to impersonate the prosecutor and organize a protest to pressure the client to accept the offer, but Kim turns it off, say. Anyway, he adopts Jimmy's tactic and sells his client the lie, well-intentioned. Afterwards, she collapses in the stairwell, shattered by guilt. It is clear that Kim and her boyfriend are rapidly approaching a serious moral stalemate. The plot of the drug cartel in Better Call Saul also continues, with the soft and sinister Lalo Salamanca, Tony Dalton, overseeing the side of Nacho's operation, Michael Mando. An investigation into an inferior product leads him to a meeting with Gus Fring, Giancarlo Esposito, and the mediator of the cartel, Juan Balsa. Fring's apology for the mix of products meets Lalo's menacing acceptance, but the complaint does not end there. After the cousin of Salamanca begins to snoop around the operation of the Fring Methamphetamine Super Laboratory, Gus sends German workers home early, stopping the construction until Lalo can be treated. It is not clear what will happen to Lalo. With the Mexican cartel examining every Fring action, it is likely that as in the fourth season, some particularly intriguing power movements will occur. Giancarlo Esposito as Gustavo, Gus, Fring, Better Call Saul Season 5, Episode 1, Photo Credit, Warwick Page slash AMC slash Sony Pictures Television and the best of all, Mike A. Mantrout, Jonathan Banks, finished the fourth season of Better Call Saul by executing runaway construction worker Werner Ziegler, and it is clear from this episode that he still feels guilty about it. After hitting Kai Ben Bilaburham in the face and being reprimanded by a disgusted Casper, he rejects the offer of a large money retainer from Fring, exchanging icy threats with his former employer. We know that Mike is already working full-time on Fring for breaking bad events, but it remains to be seen exactly how and why he reconciles with the annoying drug baron. Maybe a mutual hatred towards Zalo Salamanca could reunite them again.